Wow, it's a tough one today, yet interesting. Yeah. You know, um, breaking up or mending that relationship. Either way, a lot of work, rebuilding and adjustments are required. So we want to know what role does communication play mm. in all of this? As we yeah. know, communication, both verbal and nonverbal, is the very core of the matter. And so joining us to shed more light is our next guest. Mr. Jami Udina is an astute banker with over two decades of experience spanning the different fields of banking, including personal banking, SME banking, client services, corporate banking, loan management and recovery process. We have loads of money coming from Jami on this show this morning. Yes. <laughs> and we hear that he currently works for an international financial institution. And he's a graduate of economics from the Lagos State University, LASU, and he's a member of the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria. Jamu is happily married for 20 years to his soulmate. And uh, together they have two awesome kids. Mm. Now, since 1981, he's loved and supported Juventus Football Club also known as the old lady of cheering. Well, we're not going to talk about your loss, your team's loss a few days ago, Jamie, because that will be touching on a sore point. But all the same, we want to welcome you to this program. Welcome. Welcome, Jamie. Thank, thank you, Ellen and John, for having me here. Good morning. Now, quickly, uh, because we have very little time, yeah, we've we discovered do. that we always end up with very little time. True. So we'll True. dive right into it. Now, Jamie, could you tell us, over the past few weekends, we have been talking about relationships. Why does everything seem to revolve around communication? Why? OK, thank you. Um, no, we are animals. And communication between animals is very key. Mm. Even we communicate with our, with our, with our maker. And there's lack of communication or inadequate communication or improper communication, then things will break down. Okay? Like you're across there, if, I, if, I'm, if you can't hear what I'm saying or you can hear what I'm saying and you don't understand what I'm saying, they were not communicating. Mm -hmm. So communication comes in very, very various forms, especially in marriages. It could be verbal, it could be non-verbal. As long as you're communicating, if you communicate with your eyes, as long as you're expressing that love. In a marriage, communication is all about expressing your love, affection, uh, sincerity for each other in a verbal and non-verbal situation, always. Mm. I wake up in the morning, I give my wife a hug, that's a communication. I look at her, I give her a peck, that's communication. The way you look at each other is also communicating love. <clears throat> like your wife will say, oh, you don't oh, sorrow. Mm. You know, look at your wife and like, mm. and she like, she goes, like, mm. she mm. Oh, you so, yes. that's communication. Thank you. All right. I, I, I listened to the introduction or your introduction from John, 20 years, over 20 years in marriage, and that you are hooked on to your soulmate. And that makes me really, yeah. really happy. Now, would you say that there is undue pressure being put on individuals to communicate in a particular manner? And at some point, before we let you go, you will share some of the secrets, 20 years in marriage, to your soulmate. <laughs> Ah, how, how far? But please answer my first question. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, there's so much pressure in, uh, from the society, okay, on couples. Mm. And sometimes we also take on pressure, assumed pressure. That is how we should behave. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of fake, um, a lot of facade out there, and misconception and fake perception. People put up a facade. Happy couple, happy relationship, whereas it's not actually happy, it's not actually happy behind the scene. Mm -hmm. Now, so that now applies pressure on you. What I always advise is you and your spouse need to have like a constitution. What's the constitution? How do you want to relate with each other? Cover as many fronts as possible before getting married. And when you're in marriage, you need to communicate what you like, what I like. She needs to let you know, you need to let her know and be sincere, be open. You just have to be open with each other. There's no, there is no point lying to somebody that you've given your life to. And like I always tell people, there is no plan B in marriage. 
So if there's no plan B in marriage, then I need to make this work. Mm. So wow. mm. and the only way I can make it work is to put my ideas across in a respectful manner. She listens to it. She puts us across in a respectful manner, even when she's not, when she's in a bad mood and she flares up or whatever, which we all, which happens to every human being. Mm. We take it on board, listen, and present your case. And if it's not working at that moment, give her a hug or she gives you a hug. You guys pack it for a while, then come back to it when there is clarity of mind and you resolve it. Mm. Now, now, Thank now, you. hang on, JD. I can call you JD, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> hang, just hang, hang on a minute. But really, I, I want to know this. What are the main causes then? What are the main causes for when we say there is a breakdown, a breakdown in communication within relationships? Well, what what would cause that? What are the main reasons? It's not it's not from very very minor minor things that degenerate into big things. Okay, um, you go out, you come back, you know, and your wife doesn't like you coming back late and stuff like that. And you don't, I mean, you don't talk about it, she doesn't talk about it. Or she tells her, why are you coming back late and stuff like that. Now, she doesn't really put her foot out, I mean, to have a conversation around it. Then the next morning, you don't, I mean, you've had your lunch or, I'm sorry, you have your breakfast, you keep the cup on the, on the countertop, that washing it. It's so mundane. That could not be a flare point. Mm. You know, the main issue is different from that cup. But because she has not addressed or she's not spoken to you about what is what is in her, most women, when you see them, they tell you women don't, women want, women want to talk a lot, but they don't like initiating that talking. Sometimes they just keep a straight face, give you signs, start sign. And as a man, you are meant to understand those things and organ say, Madam, what's it? I really ask it, nothing. And there is between difference between nothing and mm, nothing, cozy. <laughs> you have to read, you have to understand that. Once you and you keep pestering her until she comes out, whatever it is, is in her mind. If you don't get that thought, then it's going to fester into something else. So it's a combination of small things building up, small things building up, and that explodes one day, and if care is not taken, consumes everybody to the point of, of no return. Mm. Which is why my advice is you need to talk to your wife or talk to your spouse both ways consistently on a daily basis. If there's anything that you don't like, let her know. If there's anything she doesn't like, she lets you know. If that doesn't happen, then you are leaving a gap, and that gap will be filled by the devil. Wow. Hmm. Thank you. Scary, too. This is very scary. Now, um, they, they talk about individuals, people being introverts. You know, some men or women don't really like to talk. They are not expressive. They would rather probably not consume, not keep so much inside, but make excuses for their spouses or, or for their friends and say, well, I am not 100%, I'm not a saint, so that is small you know is there any offense you, you just said it that people must talk about everything that communication is key now what's the volume of communication that is right because sometimes really you know you can get pissed off like somebody is talking too much and not getting directly to the matter at hand you know the rigmarole thing how harmful can that be in a relationship uh, there's no perfect way of communicating. Yes, we married for 20 years. We still have challenges uh, in communication. So we, we learn every day, you know. But you see, there's nothing like too much communication. And there's not like too little communication. As long as you have effective communication, that is key. Mm. Both of you understand each other. Sometimes, like I said, sometimes you don't have to say a word for you to communicate. You don't. You know, it's like when we're growing up, we go out, we go out uh, with our parents. The parents would have told you, don't eat to, when you go to that person, don't eat to. Mm. And you get there, they're offering you food. Or you have, or your mom sees that you're even thinking of. She looks at you one kind. The you understand that she's complicated. You get the message and you, you conform it to yourself. Sure. Likewise, in marriage, in marriage too. Now, the, your, your, your spouse could be an introvert. Before you propose, you to her or she accepted your proposal. You guys must have known each other. You guys must have been communicating in one way or the other. You guys should, I mean, that made you comfortable before agreeing to marry each other. 
you need to go back to those basics. Okay, what does she like? What does he like? What doesn't he like? What doesn't she like? You know, and how does the person want to express? Men usually don't talk much. Men usually don't want to talk much. Something's happened, a man will have rationalized in a man like this thing is gone and move on. Mm. But a woman, until that thing is properly discussed and dissected, it's not, it's not going over. You need to talk about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm more for that. By the time the woman won't come to you to talk about it, you won't forgotten what happened. Like, hey, yeah. what happened, Seth? Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't say I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, and you will be like upset, like, ah, why is he saying sorry? He doesn't even know what happened. Mm. He has forgotten. Uh. And he says, and he says <laughs> but as a man, you have to say that sorry. You. I'm sorry. You just I'm, have to say that sorry. To I'm move happy on. you said that. <laughs> I'm happy you said that because I, I was beginning to worry for myself. <laughs> because I am, I, I don't talk. You know, yeah. I'm an mm. introvert. I, mm. Maybe I'm one of those people who bottle things up for longer than necessary, necessary you know but that is me now so you're learning now that yeah, you but need that to is change me. that yeah. is me now mm. eh? but you will help me out mr uh, <laughs> mr javi where does unconditional love and acceptance come in in this whole equation we've been saying so much communicate 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 where does unconditional love and acceptance come in love me without i mean who love me. Just you love know, me. Just know, love me. Anything. Just love me. <laughs> Take anything just you love see. Me. Mm. You know, I mean, isn't understanding the individual equally as important, you know, as uh, understanding how they want to be communicated with? If I don't want too many words, you have to understand that now. Uh, am I being... Uh, am, I, am I making <laughs> myself clear? <laughs> you, are, you, are, you are very, very clear, John. Yeah. Um, Unconditional love, I equate to uh, for better for worse. Mm -hmm. And like I said uh, earlier on, for better for worse for me means no plan B. Mm. It's a one way ticket. If you have that at the back of your mind, you make that thing work. It's like you and your parents, it's unconditional love, it's one way ticket. Mm. Your mom, your dad will do things that will upset you. Do you, do you, do you now disown them or do you deny them? The tongue and the teeth will always fight. Yeah. You now cut out one tongue for the teeth or what? Wow. You understand? So that's unconditional. It's, it's a mindset. And nobody, let's be fair, let's be clear, nobody determines your happiness except you. Mm. You determine if you're going to be happy, you're going to be sad. Somebody calls you a madman. Why would I get upset? Am I mad? <laughs> no. So why would I get upset? You know, so you need to be, you know, most of the, most of the time, you know, we determine what happens. Your wife says, hey, only this and that and that, or is there your wife, or hey, you're stupid. Such language will not happen anyway. But when you say something, you know, uh, to, to, your, to your spouse, you need to also be careful what you're saying, because words are like egg. Once they drop, it can never be regained again. So you need to be very, very careful. Absolutely. Words like stupid. Idiot, nonsense, mad, you know, won't exist in your vocabulary in the house. Mm -hmm. That's on one side. Mm -hmm. Now, going back to your question that unconditional love, once your mind is set that this is it, what else again? Nothing, nothing comes to you as a surprise because you've already made up your mind that, hey, this one, I'm going to fight it out, I'm going to wait it out, I'm going to solve it. And land, as long as you and your madam have had that understanding, then that is it. Then sometimes, sometimes we need also to have certain rules or codes or to, uh, to, to, the, to diffuse heated situation. If we have, like, okay, I'll share an example, myself and a spouse, if you have misunderstanding, that is really, really, really bad. That we, just, we are not even talking for a day or two. Guess what? If you come into our house, you come into our house, like, we will not, you won't even know. That's when I'll carry and you sit on my lap. That's when we'll be kissing in front of you. You think that we're the perfect couple. Once you go, you get up, everybody goes around. But later on, we'll settle it. Wow. Then if it's getting out of hand, there's a code. There's a code we both have. No matter what, which once each, either of us use that code, everything stops. That anger, that whatever it is, drops off immediately. No matter how bad it is, it drops off and we reconnect immediately. And okay, we start laughing, then we start resolving it. Okay, this is what I did, this is what I didn't do, this is why I felt it, this is da, 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 and it's over. 
So unconditional love is a mindset you have to build between you and your spouse. You build for yourself, then make sure you encourage your spouse to build it, and you have common ground to resolve your issues. Okay. Thank you, John. I hope I've answered your question. Yes, ah, yes, yes, I feel a lot better now. And I, and, and I believe this code is personal to you and Madam. And it's not a code you can yes. share, you know, with anyone else who is at this point that needs something special like a code. Um, so that takes me to no. my next area. Uh, would there be a different okay. communication styles? For you and your wife, you have a code. You have different communication styles. Would there be different communication styles then for different situations and different people? Or is it just a one-size-fits-it-all approach? Is it just something you know, that is unique, that you can deploy, and the whole situation changes for the better? Or, you know, is it different with different people and different relationships? Ah, good question. It's different for different people because we are all unique. I'm only sharing my experience with my, in my relationship with my wife. Mm. Have, uh, we have friends who have had uh, different kind of uh, communication um, um, relationship any communication between between the in their relationship, so to say. Um, by and large, it all depends on the two parties involved. If the two of them like speaking, then they speak more. Mm. If they don't like speaking, you know, there are times you sit down with somebody you're comfortable with. You don't even have to say a word. You just sit down beside each other and you are extremely comfortable and you're enjoying each other's mm. company and presence. Mm. Some way telegraphically you are communicating. So there is no other fast rule that this is our but the only rule that applies is two of you must understand each other, must try and simulate, run a simulation of what if this happened, how do we handle it? You know, in talking to each other, you get to know what each other's preferences uh, are like. And you can now, okay, this is what my wife likes. My, like, my wife likes Eba. Why would I not be giving her Amala? Now I'm looking for trouble. Mm. My husband doesn't like coffee. Mm. Why would I be giving him agbo? I'm looking for trouble. Mm. You understand? If I have to give him agbo, I need to explain to him, say, Oga, there is no coffee. Yo. It's only agbo that we have. Yo. And this agbo, you need to take it because of A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay. At that point, it's his decision to make. So there is no, like I said, no hard and fast rule. We just need to like understand each other, agree a set of mutual, uh, uh, agree to respect each other, yeah. and how to handle certain things when they come up because they will because there will always be misunderstanding mm. and i will share one example i tell my, my 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 mom my late mom god bless her memory she's always said when i was a kid that she's going to live with me because i was a, i was a free i'm a favorite son mm. and i've always told her consistently mama you and i we fight a lot as in we always have misunderstanding there's no way you come and stay in my house what's going to happen to my wife if you and I can fight this much and very mentally, <laughs> then what's going to happen with you, man? It's not going to happen. I can build you in a house in the same compound, though, but you don't stay inside the same house with us. Mm. And that's how it is. Okay. And she, she has to understand that, okay, mm. I love you, but yeah. you have to move on. <laughs> that's wow. the word. Life has to move on. Whatever it is, you know, life goes on. We mm. either forge forward, you know, together or... We go our separate ways, but like our guest just said at the beginning, just zero your mind on there's no plan B, no going back. But John F. Kennedy once said, and I'd like to quote at this point, let us not seek to fix the blame for the past. Let us accept our responsibilities, move ahead and face the future. Mr. Dina, you really have been a lot of help this morning on our show and we appreciate you. Please say us well to Madam. 20 years, no be joko. Yeah. And I, I, I really want to thank you. I want to thank you so much, you know, because I, I think you've touched, you've touched some, some areas. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for you me personally. You felt it yourself. I felt it. Mm. So I, I want to thank you so much, uh, JD, for okay. sharing those thoughts on communication and your relationship experience. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. Thank mm. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Okay. Have a nice day. Thank you. Well, she's next with our lifestyle segment. You know her. She's Pharaoh Owotomo. And she will be joined this morning by Dr. Lanri Olushola as they both will take a look at 
love and respect. Mm. Another area that is very interesting in our topic. As we continue with our series, um, relationship series, and on to today's um, focus on should I go or should I stay, it is still our relationship series, like I said earlier, and the show is today with John and Helen. We hope you have learned a lot from the two guests we've had so far, and there's much more to come. Pharaoh is just around the corner. Please don't go away. <laughs> 